Hey guys, welcome to Motoroids. My name is Amit. This is October and we are literally being uh, scorched in this sweltering October heat. So while this month is hot, probably not as hot as the all new RC200 which has received a slew of changes. While KTM is calling it an all new motorcycle, the engine essentially remains the same but there is a lot which has changed and it's all very very appreciable. Today I'm going to let you know everything, every single bit that has changed on this motorcycle. So if you like these long format videos which let you know everything stay tuned do not forget to hit the like button subscribe to motoroids and if you like our long format content always use motoroids in your searches let's get started with the styling first because on the styling also there are a lot of functional elements which have enhanced the performance of this motorcycle and the one which a lot of you have been talking about is this big clear fly screen now it's very evident that this is not as sharp looking as the outgoing rc200 and i have to admit even I like the outgoing RC200 a lot better than how it looks but there's a reason why this looks like uh, what it looks like because A it's inspired from the RC16 MotoGP machine and uh, other racing machines uh, which have been uh, doing their duty in the MotoGP circuit so this basically tries to mimic the bigger race spec machines and that's just one of the reasons this motorcycle has also been honed in the wind tunnel and this slips through the air a lot better although we don't have the drag coefficient numbers but for sure this motorcycle is better aerodynamically it's very very evident looking at that fly screen functionally also as long as your head is tugged in you would find the benefits of uh, this big fly screen deflecting the wind although if you're sitting upright there is a lot of wind buffeting that happens so there it doesn't help much however if you want to go fast and you have your helmet tugged in it does come in handy definitely Another important change that you'll see is the introduction of an LED headlight. Now this LED headlight has been specially commissioned for India, it's not available elsewhere and since uh, the competition in this part of the world is so fierce, KTM have introduced this LED headlight specially for India, elsewhere it's a halogen. The top part of this LED unit is a low beam while the lower part is a high beam. The LED blinkers are integrated in the fairing itself. And another important part of this whole aerodynamic package are these sleeker rear view mirrors which definitely are wider, give you a very good uh, view of what's happening behind and they are wider by a significant margin and they are definitely more usable than the ones on the older RC200. They are foldable too and that really adds to the convenience especially when you are on a racetrack or if you are maneuvering through a very crowded street where there is a chance of the mirrors breaking. So that's about this uh, fly screen which everybody has been talking about. A few other details, it has this uh, hexagonal pattern on it and it also has this orange striping around it with KTM marking. Now that was about the fly screen. Coming down, you'd see the upside down forks with the Apex branding which means that the quality of the front fork has gone up. They are still the 43mm dia up upside down forks but these are higher quality apex forks and the suspension travel here has also increased by 10 mm so in effect they are a little bit more absorbent and a, and slightly more plush when you're riding over bad surfaces another important piece here is the wheel that you see here now while the size remains the same significant changes have been made to the wheel and it has benefited this motorcycle in a lot of ways now this motorcycle overall is lighter by 3.3 kgs as compared to the outgoing version and most of it has been achieved around the wheel. These wheels are promised to be a lot stronger than the ones that we saw on the outgoing version. So they are more resistant to breakage when passing over potholes or bad surfaces. They are also lighter and the 3.3 kgs that have been saved is primarily by virtue of these wheels where the wheels itself have saved about 1.1 kgs. Now apart from that if you look closely the discs here are bigger 320 mm discs and the braking on this motorcycle is a lot sharper I'll come to that in a bit but the disc spacers have been removed so that again has helped remove some weight and as you can see the hub here is hollow so that part also has added significantly to the weight saving. So all of these things has come together to save the weight in addition to whatever I've just told you, the chain cover is also now lighter and all of these things have helped this motorcycle uh, get lighter. Now talking about styling again, 
the fender here is a little different and uh, as you would have seen on the previous uh, RC the second unit started somewhere here and this unit starts uh, at a later point and the styling here is quite different and the same goes for the fairing as well it's elongated it's more shard like goes deeper towards the ground and the openings of the radiator are now bigger for better airflow management and uh, this allows the motorcycle to cool better about the cooling the radiator itself now is a curved unit it has only one fan and if you look closely here it's the same radiator unit which will be used on the upcoming uh, RC390 as well these brackets that you see here will be used for another fan because the engine there is bigger however here you have just one fan and I think that's sufficient and with the curved radiator there is more uh, surface area up to 10% more and that allows the motorcycle to cool down more quickly and I observed that because uh, after riding this motorcycle for uh, about 30 minutes where the throttle was pinned almost all the time I did not see uh, the temperature warning coming in so that really says uh, a lot about the heat management of this motorcycle especially knowing that it's a particularly hot day today about the styling part obviously the new fairing is more uh, aerodynamically efficient and there are these two blisters as well which I am not quite too fond of if you look at the graphics also the graphics here are different and you have this new RC200 marking here in place where you had RC written so in that sense this fairing has changed quite a bit apart from that this tank has now changed and this now as you can see is a metal unit up front and at the rear you have plastic and the tank size itself has changed from 9.5 to 13.7 liter increasing the fuel tank capacity by 4.2 liters which is a huge increment and now uh, the range of this motorcycle uh, will be increased by almost 40% so that's great news apart from that this panel is easier to remove and uh, the battery can be easily accessed so that's another advantage of this uh, new system right behind the tank you have this all new seat which is longer wider is plusher softer and gives the rider a lot more space to move around and along with the fact that it's sleeker right here the fact that this motorcycle still is quite high at 835 mm of saddle height it somewhat compensates for it although myself being 5 feet 10 inches as you can see I can barely put my heels to the ground so my legs are almost straight at this point in time they may not look so because of the suit but uh, I'm just about tipping my uh, heels onto the ground so if you are anywhere shorter than 5 feet 6 uh, you may have a little bit of a problem maneuvering this motorcycle so be mindful of that and not just has the rider's seat been modified it really now works very well for comfort and for movement when you're riding it uh, around a set of corners like uh, the ones on the racetrack and the rear seat which was earlier integrated like a cowl is now a properly split unit and if you look at the fabric also here it feels somewhat like Alcantara it's a very high quality premium fabric and the pillion seat also has more cushioning so in theory it's slightly more usable although the seat height for the pillion is very high and you might want to use this only for very short distances this motorcycle is not meant to be ridden with the pillion rider on the grab rails are also all new and on the previous RC it looked like an afterthought here a proper set of grab rails have been given to this motorcycle they look very very stylish they're painted in black they're very functional too and that's again a welcome change now another change that you'll see here is that this is not a one piece trellis frame and this bolt on subframe has been added here now unlike the Duke where when such a bolt on unit was added there was a weight increment no weight has been added because of uh, this change and apart from that the stiffness is more or less the same as the previous unit so this functionality has been added without depriving this motorcycle of its lightweight or its stiffness now the advantages of uh, this subframe is that a uh, it reduces the costs if uh, you take a fall and uh, you know the chassis has to be replaced so the subframe can easily be replaced it also gives uh, those who want to paint their motorcycles in different colors uh, a unique option to paint it in snazzy colors and also from the manufacturer's perspective it's easier to transport materials which are broken down into smaller parts so uh, this is another change the ground clearance here is 158 mm and it's raised by 5 mm so that should give those of you who find the ground clearance of the RC200 a little too low some respite it should 
now be able to pass over at least medium bumps even with two on without much of a problem although what i see as a problem is this cowl which is hanging a, a little bit too low and uh, if it hits a bump which is a little too vicious that might be a bit of a problem now apart from that if you look at this bracket which holds the foot peg for the pillion this bracket is also changed so the design of this is a little bit uh, different there are plastic heel guards for both the rider and the pillion and apart from that you'd also see a splash guard here for uh, the feet of the pillion rider so in case you are splashing through water there is some protection for uh, the pillion rider's feet from the splashing water apart from that if you go to see the tail lamps are also completely revamped and they are new led units and they look rather nice and very sleek the blinkers all around are LED units as well. Another interesting detail is that uh, the subframe in orange peaks through these panels which looks rather nice and you have this key slot here which is used to remove the rider's seat. Underneath you have some space although it's not much but you can probably uh, put your documents and there's also the diagnostic port here. Now let's take a look at how the exhaust also sounds and in my personal opinion it's more or less the same as before but let's anyway have a listen. This motorcycle also comes with an engine inhibitor for the side stand. So once you engage the side stand, the engine cuts off. In terms of colors, this motorcycle will be available in two colors. There is this one here, which is silver and orange, and the other one is the black and orange. And uh, it's up to you, which one do you like? We personally like the black and orange better. Both the variants have the wheels painted in orange. Now the changes that I mentioned about the front wheel have been incorporated uh, at the rear as well, although the swing arm here is the same. Now, in terms of wheelbase, the wheelbase has increased uh, very nominally by 6 mm and that should not be very, very decipherable while you're riding the motorcycle. Uh, however, when we rode this motorcycle on this track, this definitely felt a lot more planted and I'll come to that in a little bit. Let me just talk about all the changes first, the things that are important. Now, uh, about the switch gear and the handlebar, that's another important area which needs to be discussed. And uh, the switch gear has an engine kill switch you have an electric start high beam and low beam with the day flasher turn indicators and a horn the switch gear seems to be built to last but the quality of finish could definitely have been better there are some rough edges here uh, although we are being told that this is a prototype unit so uh, we are not going to put this as the final word but we definitely believe that the edges here on the switch gear could definitely have been better finished an interesting detail about these switches is that they are backlit so that really is a feature which needs mentioning now if you look at the instrument console this is an lcd unit and this is shared with the ktm adventure 250 and uh, it's very simplistic very easy to read although uh, the legibility on a bright sunny day uh, like today it could have been a little bit better to read the motorcycle also comes with supermoto abs system and uh, for that you simply have to go to the abs mode and you can turn it into supermoto by long pressing the set button this uh, instrument console gets a tachometer a speedometer the gear indicator the fuel gauge it also gets uh, an odo along with two trip meters and a lot of information about uh, the fuel consumption so you can look at the remaining range that you have along with your trip time average speed average fuel consumption so all of this is very useful information and there are a lot of telltale lights as well the background color of this lcd also changes uh, as it turns dark and it becomes brighter you also have a shift light here now a few things about the instrument console while it's very feature rich and it lets you know all the information that you want like myself uh, as a rider that, that's all i need however the game has changed a little bit and a lot of uh, other players are offering bluetooth as well as uh, a color tft display so I really would have appreciated had that been offered here uh, that is not been offered and it really would not have hurt to have a hazard button as well. Also uh, we believe that now in the mainstream segments also you have riding modes on motorcycles so uh, that feature would also have been appreciated had that been introduced on the model year 22 version. Now another important piece is the handlebar which is again an all new unit and for the Indian market the height of the handlebar has been raised by 14.5 mm as compared to the international version and that's to 
uh, facilitate a slightly more uh, relaxed riding position because a lot of uh, buyers of this motorcycle complained about the extremely committed riding position of the motorcycle however if you so wish you can lower it again by 14.5 mm so that's entirely up to you so that's a great feature and if you compare uh, the triple clamp here with that of uh, the outgoing RC there are clear differences and uh, we really believe that this is a better quality unit overall the quality on this motorcycle is pretty good the fit and finish and the paint quality all of that is uh, great and uh, which brings us to the most important bit which you probably have been waiting for all this while the performance now in terms of performance as I mentioned the engine more or less remains the same with 25 PS of peak power at 10,000 rpm and 19.2 Newton meters at 8,000 rpm however with the new uh, radiator the cooling is better so the motorcycle uh, has better heat dissipation the airflow management is a lot better apart from that a major introduction is a 40% bigger airbox which enables the torque curve to be a lot flatter now does that really work in the real world? Now all of us know that the RC200 has always been known to be a rather peaky motorcycle where the meat of the performance is available uh, higher up the rev range uh, and that by and large is still the case uh, if you look at the character of the engine you really have to keep it about 2500 rpm to prevent it from uh, knocking and 4000 rpm onwards is where you start feeling the rush of the torque above 7500 rpm you feel that kick that the KTMs are known for and then the taco needle goes all the way up to 10,500 rpm which is uh, where the limiter cuts in and if you really convert that behavior into uh, the engine speeds the first gear will take you to 42 kilometers per hour the second gear will take you to 62 kilometers per hour the third gear will take you to 82 kilometers per hour in the fourth gear you will see 104 kilometers per hour on the speedo fifth gear 124 kilometers per hour on the speedo and in the sixth gear this motorcycle showed me a top speed of 142 kilometers per hour there at the end of this straight so i don't really believe that the top speed would uh, be much different from what i saw on the speedo so about 142 to 144 given some tailwind is what you'll achieve on this motorcycle about the acceleration number 0 to 60 is achieved in a very quick 4.2 seconds and 0 to 100 is achieved in also very quick 11.7 seconds for a 200 cc motorcycle now one thing that I noticed is that the tractability of the motorcycle has improved uh, by quite a margin and while the earlier RC wanted you uh, to keep the rev slightly higher uh, if you were pottering around in town this motorcycle in the fourth gear will trundle along from 25 kilometers per hour in the fifth gear 30 kilometers per hour and the sixth gear 35 kilometers per hour onwards you will not find this motorcycle spluttering at all about the cruising speeds uh, I observed that this motorcycle does 100 kilometers per hour uh, on the speedo at about 8000 rpm with about two and a half thousand rpm left so it's a great cruising motorcycle as well so all of these things indicate that uh, there has been improvement in terms of uh, the torque curve and also the throttle response is a lot better so while you ring the throttle uh, in mid revs you get instant uh, acceleration uh, a word about the handling this motorcycle comes with a 10 step adjustable rear suspension right now it's uh, set up at somewhere uh, middle of the way and for the most part of this track i did not find anything complaint worthy although this was not uh, set to the stiffest setting however only during some instances of mid corner uh, braking or corrections i found the rear a little bit wobbly which can easily be uh, corrected by setting the preload up to a stiffer setting so the suspension has also been very very nicely set up we can give you uh, a detailed review about its performance on bad roads once we take it out for some real world testing but by the looks of it this suspension feels very absorbent and I in fact requested for setting this up to a stiffer setting because uh, it's giving in to my weight very easily so those of you who are looking for comfort should not have any problem whatsoever a word about the tires also the MRF revs tires on this motorcycle are sufficiently uh, grippy for most of the conditions on the road on a track like this if you are going to be uh, going all out if you are going to be going knee down for such kind of applications they might need replacement also in wet conditions you might consider replacing them but for most part for most of the conditions on the road these tires are sufficient there are a couple of other options which are stickier you might want to have a look at them now about the handling part 
Let's start with the braking because the brakes here are much stronger, 320mm brakes replacing the earlier 300mm and I clearly remember that when I came here the last time I rode the Duke 200 which shared the brakes with the previous RC200 and I clearly felt a difference in the braking performance between the RC390 and the Duke 200 and thankfully now here the brakes are much sharper, they allow you to brake a lot later, allowing you to carry faster speeds into the corner and in that sense this motorcycle handles significantly better than the previous motorcycle also the RC200 has always been a motorcycle which has been known for its handling and in the 2022 Avatar uh, this motorcycle feels really really nimble, very light, very easy turn-ins around a track like the Bajaj's Chakan track at which we are right now uh, there can be some challenging corners and uh, it can be sometimes a little bit difficult to dip a motorcycle down and lift it up however with its relatively lightweight and fantastically honed suspension and uh, chassis it's very very easy to dip it down and equally easy to pick it up quickly and dip it down in the next direction it was indeed a hoot to ride this motorcycle on this track and as i mentioned while there are some technical corners there was never a challenge for this motorcycle you can carry a lot of speed into the corners and it always always feels fantastically poised as i mentioned only when you are leaning the motorcycle a little too hard and throttling out of a corner you can probably sometimes feel the rear slipping out a little bit but then again you are not going to find those kind of conditions in the real world so these tires are by and large okay however these could probably have been a little better and stickier as i mentioned before in terms of fuel efficiency on a track like this we are going to keep the throttle pinned at all times you are probably going to get 26 to 28 kmpl however in the real world uh, the fuel efficiency of this motorcycle based on how you ride is going to range from 30 to 40 kmpl 40 being on the open highways where you are not going to pin the throttle too much and would be riding at an easy pace and 30 being when you are going to be riding it around a set of bends uh, very very spiritedly in city expect a very reasonable 35 kmpl now this motorcycle has been launched and it's been priced at 2.09 lakh rupees ex showroom and at that price there is hardly any difference and you do get a lot of extra gear for the 1000 rupees extra ex showroom you pay so in that sense it is a lot more value than what the outgoing rc 200 was if i really have to talk about a direct competitor for this motorcycle uh, i would like to mention the r15 v4 and the rr310 and the power output on the r15 v4 is about 7.5 ps less and the torque there is also about 5.3 newton meters less so not exactly a competition but the price there is also about 40,000 rupees less so you can look at that option and if you want to go higher you have the RR310 which has 9 PS more power and about 8 Newton meters more torque there you have a lot of other goodies like riding modes and a color TFT along with a slipper clutch which this motorcycle does not this motorcycle does not come with a slipper clutch although we did not feel that it was a problem around the bends we were shifting down very very hardly uh, the gearbox here is pretty slick the six speed gearbox has never been a problem and it remains to be a super slick, super efficient unit. Talking of a few other options that you'd probably want to look at, the Duke 200 is available at 1.85 lakh rupees ex showroom, and the Duke 250 is available at 2.28 lakh rupees for only 20,000 rupees extra. You get 5 PS more and 5 Newton meters more on that motorcycle. For those of you who are okay with an air or oil cooled unit as well, there is the Jixer 250 SF with a price tag of 1.82 lakh rupees and the power output there is 26.5 PS which is about the same, about 1.5 PS more and the torque there is 22.2 PS which is about 3 Newton meters more that also is a good option to look at so by all means if you are interested in the motorcycle a buy and uh, this is one of the sportiest motorcycles in the segment there is no direct rival there are motorcycles with bigger capacity or smaller capacity with a full fairing which you can probably go for but if you want this kind of an experience with this kind of uh, positioning direct rivals very very few and the RC uh, 200 continues to be the hooligan that it has always been known to be I really hope that this video was of some use to you I was able to answer all the questions that you had about this beautiful new motorcycle if you liked the video do not forget to hit the like button subscribe to Motoroids press that bell icon and always always Press the always option and until next time, this is Amit Shangani signing off, rev hard, rev free and ride safe.